All right, so we are doing a brew in the bag, single vessel brew today. We're gonna do a, a recipe I got off the uh, internet. It is a uh, blonde ale, pretty simple. Uh, this is a smash recipe, so it only has basically two ingredients plus your yeast. So we're doing a, uh, fermentables will be a two row and a crystal tin. I got 10 pounds of two row and a pound of caramel crystal tin. Our hops, we're gonna do a whole ounce of uh, Fuggles hops, about 40 minutes. Then uh, we're gonna pitch uh, some White Labs uh, WLP002 yeast. Uh, we're gonna put that in there. When we get to boiling, we're gonna do a little Irish moss, about a tablespoon of, uh, it's like a teaspoon, excuse me, of uh, Irish moss, just do some clarification on it. Um, so we'll give this one a try. I've had some pretty good luck with some of these. Some of them, eh, they're not too good. Um, this is a step up for me. We're, we started out doing uh, extract in a gallon. I've got like two gallon jars still fermenting in, inside. Uh, we're gonna bottle those later. So this would be my first brew in the bag, first all grain, first anything this big. So we're gonna see how it goes. Pretty excited. Um, get this water up to temperature and then uh, we'll go from there. All right, we've got our pot. We've got just about seven and a quarter gallons of water. Um, just put a new burner on from this old turkey fryer burner. It worked for turkey frying. So we went with a bigger banjo burner. And uh, I'm gonna pull this off to light it because I don't have a fancy ignition lighter. So uh, a little gas going here. We're gonna set this. It is really heavy when you put nearly eight gallons of water in it. Light us up. Alright, we're gonna get this up to I think 153 degrees before we uh, put our grain in. And we got a fancy thermometer over here that's uh, sitting at about 61 right now. I'll crank a little heat up on it. We've got our hoses here because we're going to do a uh, brew in the bag. So I'm going to put the bag in. And uh, once this warms up, this hose gets it's pretty stiff. We've got a little uh, recirculation pump. We're going to mash for like, 70 minutes. And then uh, we'll mash out at I think 163. And then we'll uh, start a boil. We've got a few additions after that. We'll go from there. Let me get everything else ready. Okay, we've got our water heating. Uh, I've got 11 pounds of grain. I've got uh, 10 pounds of Great Western two row and a pound of uh, crystal tin, caramel crystal tin. This is a blonde ale, so it's gonna come out pretty light. I'm just gonna put some of this in this bucket here that I've got behind my so, uh, two gallon bucket just to help me pour. When I get to corn, I was very curious. We're trying to blow ourselves up here. Green bus. Alright, I just put it in here just to make it a little easier for me to get it in the in the pot so I can stir and uh, and keep any dough clumps down to a minimum. Uh, we've still got a little ways to go. We're about 80. 82, 84. I've got my uh, trusty digital thermometer. It's pretty accurate. I don't know how accurate this gauge is. So uh, we'll take a gander here, see. Uh, yeah, it's pretty close. Showing 86. So yeah, it's pretty close. 
This one it, it even has a uh, couple of little call outs so when you do your dough in, uh, where your conversions are at, I don't know how accurate it is, but uh, we're going to see if it's uh, anywhere close. So uh, we'll let this continue to heat up and uh, get ready to put our grain in. All right, so I've got my uh, little trusty thermometer here. I've got some water recirculating. Um, just to try to speed things up a little bit. We're sitting at about 28, climbing up to about 130. I have on my phone, I have Beersmith. Uh, it's a great app if you haven't checked it out. Uh, highly recommend it. So I basically took that recipe that I had, put everything into to a Beersmith, got all the numbers to match what was on the sheet, and uh, you can set your mash profiles, your equipment. Uh, it's, it's amazing. We're gonna do a two-stage fermentation on this one. I haven't done that before, so uh, it's, it's pretty easy. Um, we're going to have an ABV of about 4.7, hopefully. It's gonna be a nice uh, spring beer that we can enjoy. Let's check our, our temperature. Temperature gauge on this one says 130. Let's see how close it is. Like I said, I've got a little water recirculating. Now we're at 130, so it's, it's pretty accurate. Got the fire going. It's, I had to turn it up a little bit. It was, uh, it was taking a little longer than I thought to, to get this is seven, over seven gallons of water. So I'm not used to uh, heating up that much water. Uh, used to that one gallon brew uh, size, doing like two and a half gallons, and it gets there in no time. And uh, before you know it, you're done. So. This is going to be uh, probably dark by the time I get done. We should be ready to add some grain in about 7 degrees. So it's uh, as soon as it gets up there, we'll start dumping grain. Neighborhood kids came out. They're having fun in the backyard. Okay. So I've got the water temperature up to where we want it. We're at 154. Actually, I want it at 156. Uh, when you pour the grain in, it's going to actually drop the temperature because the grain is air temperature out here and it's 60 degrees. Um, I'll turn everything off, the pump off, and um, we'll probably keep the fire going. I'll just turn it down uh, as we get ready to, uh, to mash all of our grain. Yeah, so we'll turn this guy down. We'll see how this new burner goes. It should be really low. Killer pump for right now. Close our valve. Okay, so I've got our fire is still on. I'm setting at 156. So we're going to start adding some grain.
pretty good. So we're gonna get our lid. I'm gonna get my pump. We're gonna circulate water as it's going. We're gonna cut our fire off. And there we go. So now we're gonna we're at 54. So we'll turn our fire off while this is going here. So in 70 minutes, an hour and a little bit longer, we'll uh, check on it. I'm going to probably check on it periodically. And we let it set. The temperature is so far steady, but uh, I'm interested to see how much we lose because it's like 60 degrees outside today. So I'm interested to see how much temperature loss there is out here. Then we'll. Uh, Get ready to uh, mash out and uh, start our boil. Be back in about an hour. So what I'm doing here is I've got my pump on and with the valve open on the other side, we're letting the mash circulate so that we can keep our temperature pretty consistent because we're fixing to mash out. We're really close to time. Get my uh, trusty timer here. So we only have three minutes left on the mash. Then we're going to mash out at 168. So I'm going to crank the heat up. We'll mash out for 10 minutes and then uh, the mash is complete. I'm just recirculating this to help make sure I get all the sugars and all the good stuff out of that grain so that we can get a good uh, Good high quality homebrew. We'll see how it uh, turns out when we get done here. All right, we've got about two minutes left, and we're gonna crank the heat up on it. Uh, we've got to get it up to about 168 for about 10 minutes. Um, that's our mash out temperature. So far, everything's going good. We had one little mishap with a uh, hose clamp that was missing. My fault. So we uh, we got the uh, patio kind of wet. <laughs> and, uh, Got it cleaned off, so uh, we didn't lose, but just maybe two cups. I'm not worried about that. Um, I've got our little steel mesh deal we're gonna put over the uh, kettle. I think this came out of a microwave that we had at one time. How, why we kept it, I don't know, but it came in really handy today. So uh, we're gonna put this over the uh, kettle and uh, squeeze out as much of the water as we can that'll get all the sugars and get all the good fermentable stuff back in the kettle so we can uh, start our brew. Alright, we just hit our mash out. Uh, it says 10 minutes but we're, we'll try to get it as close to 160 as we can um, and then we'll uh, start the uh, squeeze process and then get ready for a boil. And It's a 60 minute boil. It did get dark on us because I started this late Oh well, all I have to do is go to work tomorrow, so no big deal. Hopefully this thing will get to going pretty quick. And we're already at 160, so we're going to mash out real easy. I'm going to go ahead and shut the pump off and uh, get everything ready to uh, start the boil. Alright, we're uh, sailing past 160 for our mash out temp, and we've got, yeah, we got about 10 minutes on our mash out. So we have to hit 168 over 7 minutes. Uh, shouldn't be too hard. We're getting really close to that. And uh, I'll cut the heat back a little bit, and then uh, we'll start getting ready to pull this grain bag out. Peek at what it looks like. Oh yeah, that smells 
amazing. For two simple ingredients, that smells amazing. So, yeah, that's going to turn out pretty good. So I just want to check the mash temperature. And I do sterilize these things. I have a spray bottle of Star Sand over here that we keep everything sterilized. Yeah, it's creeping up 160, it's slow. Let me probably crank the heat just a little bit more. So you can't homebrew without drinking homebrew. So I've got some inside, I'm gonna go grab it, I'll be right back. All right, so this was a, uh, Basically the same thing I'm making here. This was an extract version with uh, some dry malt extract and uh, some Fogel's hops and I think I used nodding uh, yeast. Turned out really well. It's it's about a 5% beer and uh, for the first blonde ale that I made it wasn't bad. Oh it's really smooth too so let me get up here closer to the camera and get some light on it. So it turned out really good. It's kind of a hazy blonde, but it still holds its uh, its head foam head just pretty nice. Uh, but uh, it's not bad. It's pretty smooth. It's not overpowering either. So we're hoping this this turns out real similar to this because it's basically the same recipe, just all grain instead of a uh, DME. So uh, so we're done with the mash out. Um, we hit our temperatures almost spot on um, within about a degree or two so I'm not too worried um, so we're ready to pull this and we'll put that screen underneath this um, wish me luck because I'm not too sure about the the bag here this does have a false bottom in it and it has a bazooka screen so I think even the, any either way we're, we're probably pretty good we'll just have to do some transferring but uh, here goes oh yeah we got this in the bag. And crap, this thing's heavy. Okay, 10 gallon pot, five gallon bag from Home Depot. It held together. And it's not really that hot, I mean, it's, it's Oh, it's 177 degrees almost. Oh, it smells so good. The nice thing about this right here, this bag of grain, it's not going to go in the trash. We're actually going to repurpose this and we're going to make dog treats. So we have two fur babies that we love to death. They're going to love this. This is just two roll in some caramel crystal malt. Nothing that's going to hurt. There's no hops in it. We haven't added the hops. That doesn't come in until like 40 minutes on the boil. So um, not too worried about that. Mix this with a little recipe we found online. We're going to try to make a little bread with it. Try that and uh, see how it goes. It's warm. All right. All the naysayers. I've heard both Goods and bads, but I am going to squeeze the bag. Pray it doesn't break. I'll probably leave it sitting like this for about 10 minutes. I've got a low heat on it, so it's going to keep it warm. There's still a whole lot of water in here. I mean, there is a ton of water. still going. <laughs> I'm really not putting that much pressure because I don't, I mean, I trust the bag, but then I don't trust the bag because I mean, we want to use this grain for something in the near, very near future. It'll probably be tomorrow, so because by the time I get done with this, it's going to be late. I don't want to let this stuff cool. And it's hot. Look at that steam coming off of it. It's mm -hmm. cold outside too. <laughs> There's still a ton of water in here, so I'm going to reposition it. Uh, it just keeps 
going on? Oh, it smells so wonderful. I love pots that can do that. And I'll get a little bit and I'll take a gravity reading. I've got a new refractometer. So we'll take a uh, pre wool note it down in my, in my book. And yeah, we'll easily get six and a half, six and a quarter. Can't imagine doing a 10 gallon, you know, true 10 gallon boil. This bag would be big. Yeah, all my efforts, I have gotten an extra, was it six? I got a half gallon almost out of this thing, it looks like. All right, since we're gonna keep this for a little bit, we're gonna just store it. It barely fits in there, so I'm going to set it aside. And there's our uh, pre-boil wart. I'm going to grab uh, my uh, refractometer, get a pre-boil uh, gravity reading, and uh, that way I can document it, try to get it as close to the recipe as I can. It's two, two products, I mean, you can't go too wrong. We'll crank the heat up and uh, get her to a boil real quick and start our timer as soon as it hits a boil. The nice thing about that is you can take a sample without getting back in it. So uh, just a simple refractometer, about 20 bucks. I think we got them on Amazon. Comes with a nice little padded box. It's got an adjustment. This one's not the automatic temperature control one, which it's all right. I mean, we'll take it. We'll let this get back to room temperature before we check it. Just want to get some numbers. Uh, it's got the little thief right there that you can use. Pretty neat little deal for 20 bucks. Comes with its own little carrying case. I can link that in the description below um, where we got it. A lot of this stuff comes from Amazon so it is cheap if you have Amazon Prime. All right, we crank the heat up. Uh, let's see where we're at. That one's 70. I can see it churning it. Boy, it looks great. So we just get this up to a boil, start our timer. All right, we just hit our boil. Got my uh, beer smith timer running. Um, it's about 20 minutes, give or take. Uh, so it's 18 minutes. We'll put our first ingredient in, which is uh, our uh, Fugel uh, hops. We're gonna dump a whole bag, one ounce worth of hops in it. Um, I'm actually not gonna dump it straight in here. I'm gonna use uh, a mesh bag and basically try to keep all the trub out of it that I can, all this hop trub. So uh, I'm gonna get that ready. Uh, get my hops already out here. Um, see if we can get this uh, finished up. All right, this is the bag we started with. Throw this one in my pocket here. This was a well. I got two of them in a package. They're like three, four dollars at Home Depot. It's a five-gallon paint strainer, nylon. It's really nice. It's it's uh, I was amazed. It's pretty tough. Right next to it was a smaller one gallon strainer. We're gonna use this. I was gonna make a, sp a hop spider. I just hadn't got around to it yet. We had a lot of stuff going on. So that's next to my list. But this, we're just gonna tie it off, put our hops in it, tie it off, drop it in our wart, let it run its time, and uh, pull it out when we're done. We don't have all the leftover hop material uh, in our wart when we're done so we can just pull this out clean it out reuse it next time so let me get that ready and uh, by then hopefully we'll be ready for uh, 
the addition of uh, hops. All right, so I just got a piece of monofilament. I got lots of it. I do love to fish, so just a little piece of monofilament. We're gonna use to tie off this bag so that we don't have to dig it out. I mean, it's got a false bottom, so it wouldn't be hard to get, but it's easier just to clip it off to the side of the kettle, and uh, we can just pull it out here in a few minutes. Okay, uh, we're getting close. We got about three minutes left in, uh, before we drop our hops. Um, I'm just gonna do a quick slice these open. It's always nice to have a nice sharp knife. Oh, they smell so good. I don't care, hops smell good to me. It's got an elastic drawstring on it. Uh, we're just gonna just open them up. I'm not gonna worry about anything fancy with it. It's gonna be in the wall, so it's gonna be in there for a while. Like I said, this is a full ounce. Yeah. I'm gonna get them all. And this is just the standard I guess YCH hops. Let's uh, get a blight here. These are UK Fugles. They're at alpha 4.4%. Um, I've done it in a couple of other beers and it, it, it is actually pretty good. It, it has a good aroma, good taste. So now that we get those in there, I'm just gonna pre, I'm gonna pre get this stuff together. I was gonna use the red fishing line that I have, but this was what was closest to me. I just started, so I'm, I'm new to this. I um, started this with a Northern Brewers, um, what was it, Brew Share kit, which I still use a lot of the parts of. All right. So it's kind of hard to see, but there's a, you can see, kind of see it in the reflection of the light we've got going. So uh, I've got an ounce of uh, Fugel's hops. Uh, a four foot of fishing line. I just grabbed it and cut it. So uh, we'll drop this in there as soon as my alarm goes off in Beersmith and uh, let it do its thing. And then let's check our trusty. Oh, I guess my phone has already gone into do not disturb mode, so it's uh, at it now. <laughs> I'm just going to add our ounce just straight in. Then I'm just going to reach over here and just do a little tie it off okay so it's already started to sink um, you kind of see it right there this will cut down a tremendous amount on the trub that's in the bottom of my current fermenters in there I just you know I dry hopped one of them a couple of times there's tons of it I think I'm gonna start doing this to all of them just because it's so much cleaner so it's like a ten dollar run a copper 10 foot ten dollars uh, it's not very big but I was doing one gallon extract brews it's perfect for my little three gallon brew pot we're gonna try it in this one it's gonna take a lot of water a lot of ice um, hose clamps like a buck and a half at Lowe's highly recommend them and then uh, we have a uh, just a ten dollar ten fifteen dollar Harbor Freight uh, submersible pump with a really long cord which is nice. The only thing it didn't have because I'm using um, basically this is like this is quarter inch uh, copper tubing. And I've got a copper tube or tubing bender so I did some really nice bends in it. It came out really well. Um, the only thing I had to do was 3D print. I have a 3D printer which is I would recommend to anybody if you have the chance to get one. I did 3D print an adapter for the pump itself um, it was on Thingiverse, uh, super simple. It plugged all into everything, adapted to the hose. I think I'm using 3 8 or something. I have to look back at my notes. But uh, no, I think it's quarter inch. It's not real big, but it does the job. We'll see how it does on this big batch. I'm very curious as to whether it's just going to make a lot of hot water or it's going to chill it off. It's going to be interesting to see what the thermostat does. So you see me pick up my phone every now and then. I might be looking at Beer Smith, but I'm also looking at our Instagram um, account. I've been posting a lot of pictures of what we're doing this evening and lots of great feedback. Um, you know, there's a lot of great information of other people doing this. It's a great community of uh, people doing homebrew. A lot of places that are doing the big stuff, that's how they started. So uh, it's great, it's a great hobby. Okay, we got our 
I stole this from my wife. It's her beach body measuring cup for her something she had. We've got uh, Irish moss. And just add one teaspoon during the last 15 minutes of boil. Or whatever your recipe recommends. And I got these colorful, these are so cool. These colorful measuring deals. I came with one of my scales that I bought off of Amazon. So it is what it is. So what I'm going to do is pre-measure this, put it in this, and uh, have it ready so we can just drop it right in. On a side note, I've never used Irish moss before, so it's supposed to clarify your beer a little bit. I'm going to try it. We're going to drop it straight in. We're not going to put it in a hot bag or nothing. We're just going to drop it in. Here's our setup. So we have our uh, barrel, that, just a my cleaning my cleaning bucket that I use sanitizer in. So we're just going to put some ice in. It's already got a, about three or four gallons of water in it. Um, some hoses goes into our wort chiller. It's already in there. It's getting nice and hot. We've still got a decent boil going. It's not a huge rolling boil. It's a lot of fluid. I'm fixing to check the level. Looks like we're close to five and a half. Um, so we're going to be close to five when we get done. And uh, hopefully we won't lose too much because we are going to be going through the valve on the other side to put it into the uh, fermenting bucket. So a little on the Gas One kettle. The Gas One kettle is something I found on Amazon. I've been looking for kettles for the last few weeks after I decided to go all grain and do brew in the bag, something bigger. I saw one that was a single vessel with a big I call it crawfish cooker because we're in the south we love crawfish coming up here pretty quick they had the big basket inside of it you put all your stuff in it with a, with the mesh nylon bag pull it all out and it just kind of sits there that was great couldn't find what i wanted for a reasonable price but this was about 140 150. Um, amazon prime you get it in two days can't beat that but it came with the false bottom the bazooka uh, a nice analog gauge stainless steel ball valve so uh, I added in the kit the uh, screw on bar fitting so that we could have connection for our hoses. Just a quick changeover. We got a bunch of ice that we just put in our bucket. Some of it. Oh gosh, yeah, it got really hard. That won't take long to fix. So we're gonna let that get the water nice and cold, which it is. And then our well we've got about three minutes actually two minutes left so we're at right at two minutes before we add our Irish moss and uh, ten minutes after that we should be done. Alright so we're going to dump this in. That's it. Alright we are at the end of the boil. So we're going to turn off this close the valve. Okay we got our lid I'm going to leave the hops in there for right now. This is sterilized. I just shot it with star sand. I'm going to plug in our pump. I'm going to let the uh, hot water side just run on the ground. Oh yeah, it's chilling. We were at 214 at the boil and we're just in a few seconds already down to 200. So 14 degrees in just a few seconds. I've got another bucket of water here just to add to this so it doesn't go dry. We'll run this on the ground until oh, it's already cool, so we can recirculate. Here we go. Plenty of water. We'll let this run until we get down to about 80 degrees. 770 is where we want to pitch, um, but we'll take it in when it gets down to about it's close to 80, so we'll let this run until all the ice is melted and come back and look at it here in about 10 15 minutes. Now we're going to use a little bit of this fluid left in here, putting our uh, do we get a final gravity or a specific gravity reading. Settle out. I got my trusty little uh, hydrometer. I got both, which I'll use both, but I wanted to see what it did with this. I mean, that's the bottom of the barrel, and there's a lot of sediment still in it. We'll let that settle out. 
I'm not going to put that in my brewing bucket, so. We'll let that set. It's got to cool off a little bit, so it'll actually change, get to more closer to room temperature. As I can see what the temperature is right here. I can just let that set. 79, still a little warm. Not nine degrees warm, but it's, it actually came out the same as what this one came out. So it's, uh, it's encouraging. Learn right, how to use both of them. So that's it. We're gonna pitch our yeast and uh, call it a night. Put the blow off tube on this one because I imagine it's gonna get hot and decide to get exciting. I mean, there's enough headspace there. I probably don't need to, but it's always a safe bet just to put a blow off to. I don't know what this yeast will actually, I don't know how it reacts compared to some of the other ones I've used. So uh, we'll let this one cool off just a little bit more then we'll um, pitch it and call it a night. Thanks for uh, sticking with us through the brew and hopefully you'll uh, hit the like button, maybe subscribe and be ready for the next brew. Have a good evening.